Time now for my daily interview series, Money Talks. Now, we all know those dreaded words, don't we, when you're calling customer service. Please hold. An operator will be with you shortly. We've all been there, stuck on hold for ages, waiting to speak to an advisor about an appointment or a missing parcel. Over the course of the pandemic, this problem only got worse, of course, with so many of us being told by a chatbot, a recorded message driven by artificial intelligence, to call back later after possibly being on hold for an hour or more. But that's not the case with the Lemon Contact Centre, an all-purpose contact centre which provides inbound call services and customer service web chats. It's run by people, not chatbots. Founded in 2003 by Martin Anderson and his wife, Lemon Contact Centre has grown from humble beginnings in the couple's converted garage to become a business employing 100 people with a global clientele turning over millions of pounds. And here's to tell us more about the Lemon story. It's Martin Anderson, CEO and founder of Lemon Contact Centre, my latest guest on Money Talks. Good to have you with us here on The Money. Uh, so I've heard of Apple, I've heard of Blackberry, now I've heard of, of Lemon. <laughs> Where'd the name come from? Exactly that. So oh. when we looked to start the company back in 2003, I come from a telecoms background, and around then you had Orange, you had Blackberry, you had Apple, and we were literally sat on a Sunday morning, um, lying in bed, just kind of think, no kids back then, <laughs> I think, you know, what can we call this company? And we were going to call it, I think, Sergeant Peppers at one point. Oh, yeah. A bit of Beatles spin, yeah, a, bit yeah. of a bit of a fan in the family, so uh, with Leslie's mum. Um, but then Lemon popped into our mind and thought, you know, we've got these different fruits which are doing all right for themselves, so there might be room for one more. To it's speak. sharp, it's zingy, and it's good Investing. in a gin and tonic. <laughs> so tell us about what happened during the pandemic in terms of people, you know, customer service, call centres and so on. I really do think there was a, an, an upsurge in the sort of sense of public dismay and impatience at being endlessly kept on hold. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, all other industries it had its pressures, you know, resource people, trying to get people into work, being remotely or, or, or whatever it is, or into the office and actually onto the phones or onto live chats was a difficult kind of thing. So everyone had the pressures. Technology is there to assist, and it does, um, but it was a challenge. It really was, and everyone kind of did the best at that time. But we're coming out of that period now. I think everyone accepts it, and certainly from our business, we're seeing from January, certainly this year, we're not having the impact that COVID had with isolation, et cetera. And therefore, you start to feel that where people are still using the overhang of COVID, dare I say, as an excuse potentially of not answering the phone. You can dare say, it, you it, can it, dare to say it because a lot of a lot of people think it. Yeah, it could be a problem, and, and I know people get irritated when that person get irritated with when you have recorded messages that are telling you before you even get it's rang once. Yeah. You're, you're going to be it's going to be a long time and hold. We've got no appointments anyway, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're not aligning people up for a very good service at that point. So tell us how your company ensures that we talk to a human rather than a robot. What is it that your company does? And how does it sit between customers and the companies that they're trying to get hold of? Yeah, so we're an outsourcer, so we work on behalf of other companies. So if you were to ring that company at a certain period of time, you might come through to ourselves. That could be on overflow, or it could be out of hours, or a particular kind of function that we support. Um, now, the way we, we look at customer service is very people-to-people -people based. You know, Right, right from the start, when Leslie and I started the business, we were answering the phones and doing every job you could possibly do. And we did it on a mobile phone with a fax machine um, and, and a pen and paper. So it was very, very human, human orientated. Obviously, time's gone by and technology's really sort of got, in, got into it now. But I'm very focused on technology being blended with people. Technology's fantastic, we know that. Last mm. two or three decades has exploded and it can be used really well in a customer service environment but it should assist the operators who are on the front line, not replace them, and I think that's where the problem's being caused. But do you actually implement and provide customer service on behalf of the, cust on behalf of the companies, or are you basically there, with all due respect, mm -hmm. it's a very successful business, uh, and it's great to have you on the show, but are you there basically to tell customers, you know, via a human being rather than a message, that they've got to stay on hold for a bit longer or they can't get through? No, no, the purpose is with the cause that we can actually hopefully solve their problems. Oh, I see, problem. OK. But a lot of it might be that... So you really have to be plugged into the businesses that, oh, you're, that you're serving. Yeah, we have to be able to triage the calls, first line fix if we can, but then we'll be calling people out. So we work heavily in, in the engineering sector and care Right, sectors. OK. So if you've got a, a particularly a retail unit has a, a plumbing fault or a lift broken down, it will come through towards. We'll try to do the first. And where one. are your people based? You've got more than 100 people now. Yeah, they're all based in the northeast in Stockton and Tees. 
yeah. good part of the country. Yeah, no, yeah. People like the Northeast accent. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a driver. People. Rachel like Sweeney will love me for that. Our yeah, no, 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 Rachel, no, yeah, no, she's great. Yeah, no, people do, and it's it's a brilliant, a brilliant driver for us. So briefly, Martin, what's the vision? How far could this go? You've obviously grown since 2003 before you had kids. You've got family now. Yeah. You're still running the business with your wife. I'd ask yeah, you yeah. about that, but we haven't got yeah. enough time. Yeah. What's the vision? Well, we've done a lot in the last 20 years, but a lot of it's been a, a bit of a learning curve for, for Leslie and I since we founded it. But now we, we've come through the pandemic. I think everyone who has come through stronger, and we want to go further and further with this and, and be the best that we can in the industry, provide a crack in service to, to our clients, help everyone around us, create opportunities for our staff and our, our, our clients and our suppliers as well, and really hit, 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 the, hit the, the ground running and, and just see how far we can go. Well, Martin Anderson, you are the founder, co-founder. Co-founder. <laughs> I won't get away with that. Of Lemon Contact Centre. Thanks a lot for being my latest guest Thank on you. Money Talks. And Thanks. stay in touch. Thank you very much.